everybody want to text me. going to wait for a few people to come in before I start happy Sunday everyone Hi Jonathan, hi Trevor. Who else is in here? Okay, I'm gonna ask everyone who's here to share the video video out. Um, this is basically going to be a quick summary of this week because this was a really good week for progressive action. Also, good. So if it's a good week for progressive action, it's a good week for everybody, right? Um. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna start with giving a shout out to Tremel for his his speech on um, Wednesday at the MTA board meeting. Uh, he was going down there anyway, but that story about the the train operator who was denied paternity leave for his child who happened to be born stillborn um, that pretty much just happened. I, like on his way to the meeting. So that was just pretty much off the dome. Um, and also a shout out for speaking out for women's rights and the things that we don't have down here. Um, I just wanna pretty much share a few fun facts being that, yes, happy Women's History Month. It's a, it's officially March, so it's, it's our month. We should be celebrated, of course. Um, just to share with you in what is this here? 1973, Marion McAllister, excuse me, was the first woman hired as a train operator. She took the test with along with 1,083 men, and she scored in the top 20 percentile. She was she was actually number 19 out of 200 and. Uh, 259 people who actually passed that test so that is that was that was amazing that happened in 1975 and once again i'm gonna say it, it's, it's a shame that the first woman came down in 1975 and here we are with only two weeks maternity paternity leave which we only got in uh 2014 um how about myrna wright myrna wright was the first woman to be hired in New York City as a bus operator, and that happened in 1975. It's a little fun fact. One more. Deirdre Hickey. Who took the test as what she called a goof? I guess for kicks to see if she was gonna actually pass or if they would actually accept her. She passed the test in 1973 and was hired as the first female conductor uh, in 1979 for the LIRR. So, yes, women doing big things in the 70s. Um, but yeah, so we had the Tramel speak at the MTA and board meeting, which was awesome. He brought to light the the fact that women are being penalized for sick time usage um as far as promotions are concerned. Um that has personally happened to me. Uh I passed the the train dispatcher test but i guess with timing it was right after i had my daughter who is now five and i used i ex i exhausted all of my sick time and i was told that because of that i would be skipped over and not offered a promotion i appealed it and they still denied me i was told i could fight but at that time i was just disgusted with the ta um and their policies because that makes no sense that's something that a man would not have to ever go through here exhausting his sick time because he stayed out with um uh complications due to his pregnancy so um well you know what i mean so that's something that affects women 
and it has been affecting women. We have been passed over and looked over because of things that are natural. This is how the world progresses. We have to reproduce. Um, the TA is just not really family friendly, especially when it comes down to women. Um, also, because of that, I would like to invite all women. Men, also pass this story on to the women that you know. If they had any experiences um, with the TA as far as being turned down, being threatened to be put no work assigned, because that happened to me too, um, or just to share their experiences, whether it's a bus operator, a track worker, a cleaner, because I know you still have to pull these heavy bags, the, the cleaning products and stuff like that, the fumes, um, uh, excuse me, um, just any woman that has to, had to go through anything, we encourage you to come with us down to the next MTA board meeting, which is being held Wednesday, March 25th at nine o'clock. So I'm going to put up a flyer or well, a digital flyer about it. Um, if you want to speak, please reach out to me, Jocelyn or Tramel, and let us know that you want to come down and speak. We will really need, we really need these stories to get out there. We want the public and also the TA, the managers to know what's happening down here. Cause it seems to be a disconnect. When I remember me personally speaking to management, they seem like they don't know what's happening with the rank and file. They just go based on what the managers are telling them. Um, so we need to bring awareness to these issues. It's, like I said, it's, it's no way women have been on this job since 1975. And we're still struggling with facilities. We're still struggling with maternity leave. We're, still, we, we, we're just now getting these um, milk expiration rooms. Um, it's, it's, it's just, excuse me, expressing. Milk expressing rooms, I guess that's what you call it. Well, you, when you go to pump. It makes no sense that we're still going through that now in 2020 it seemed like everywhere else they're advancing people have more maternity more maternity leave paternity leave even for the fellas don't you guys want to when you have a newborn don't you want to stay home with your, your child longer than two weeks there's places i've heard a woman complaining because her job gave her four months four months and we we just got two weeks in 2014 my daughter was one of the first Matter of fact, I was the, one of the first pregnant people to actually take advantage of the two weeks maternity leave in 2014 because she just happened to be born September of 2014. Um, but just for recovery, we're not even covering the time it takes to recover from the childbirth itself. Like, you're supposed to have six weeks at the very least, but they want to hurry you back. And not only that, you only can use your maternity leave once you get give birth. So basically they're telling you, we want you to climb up on these trains. We want you to climb up on these buses. We want you to climb up and down on these tracks, pull this garbage up into the day you pop. So not only are you risking the life of your child, you're unborn, you're risking your own life. So we need to bring awareness to this. So I encourage all women who have experienced that down here uh, to come and come out once again March 25th come out with progressive action and speak on um, your story just tell your tell your story and even if you, you're not, not the type to speak in front of people share your story with us and we'll convey it or someone else will convey it but I encourage you because we need to show more faces we need to show more solidarity down there for you to tell your story I know there's other women that have gone through something similar to what I've just described like I said I remember I even sent the G2 down to um, the union. I sent the G2 to the, the crew office and told them that I was at the time almost, I was a week, matter of fact, I was already eight months pregnant and they kept assigning me put-ins out of the yard. So if you're not familiar with RTO or what a put-in is, is when you have to, you have to retrieve your, your train from the yard to put it in service. Um, you're doing your inspection and with their inspection, you're climbing, literally climbing up and down onto the equipment and it's 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 a strain on your body you could possibly slip don't let it be raining or snowing it's very dangerous so all i i didn't even ask to be pulled off the train i'm a train operator oh i'm sorry for those who don't know me i'm kimberly mclaurin also known as nuke i'm also executive board member train operator division um I asked just to eliminate jobs without a putting give me a put a job that start out of the station which there are plenty of. 
But I was told if I didn't go on that job that had a pudding out the yard, that would be placed on the no work assigned list, which means essentially I would be laid off. So I was threatened with being laid off because I didn't want to climb up and down on a train eight months pregnant. And if some of you remember me pregnant, I was not the smallest. My stomach was, I literally had a torpedo of a stomach. And I have to give a shout out to the men who actually, you know, they did my puddings for me. A few guys actually did my puddings, but there were times where I didn't have anyone available or there was no one available to do the pudding for me. But I think the guys that were actually helpful and looked out. Um, but yeah, tell your friends, your coworkers, your partners, conductors, train operators, track workers, uh, cleaners, uh, station agents, whomever. Tell them that we're doing this. We need everyone to come down. It's Women's History Month. Um, we have a few other things coming up as well. Oh, I wanted to give a shout out to my team, especially Jocelyn and Denise. Um, we just did the senior Black History Month celebration at Stuyvesant Garden was really nice the seniors had a, a great time we had a great time they actually danced circles around a lot of us mostly me um but it was it was fun so we will be back there next year i don't know if we're gonna do the black history month celebration i'll go back to our um valentine's day de uh, dance but i'm hoping that and i think we might be doing something with them in the summer also we need more participation um, I know you guys watch Tramel's lives um, on Progressive Action TV, like where you're watching me now. When he asks for a donation, this is not something that's going in his pocket. I've seen someone say something negative to the point where he's begging for the donations to go in his personal pocket. That show that he does with the background and the, how it reached Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, they're charging us by the minute. So the information that you guys receive that you're not receiving from your union reps, it cost us. So we're just asking that you guys contribute to getting yourself information. Just like you pay for the subscription to your favorite magazine, you pay for the subscription for your favorite digital newspaper, you pay for your subscription of Netflix or whatever, contribute to this. It, it doesn't have to be a large amount of money. It's like upward of 12,000 people in this group. Everyone contribute $5, $10. It will be something that will help you, something that helps us, something that helps the union. Um, it's not, it not only goes to the show, but when we do our rallies, when we, uh, as far as our publications, once again, getting, um, giving out more information, um, we, we don't get paid outside of this. We use our own funds. So if you think that we should be the only ones contributing to our future as a union, then I don't know what to tell you. But it's, it's you, you, everyone has to, to do their part. Because if you're not out there marching, at least support the people that are out there marching and putting their asses, excuse my language, but I'm going to say it, put your, putting our asses on the line because we have faced some shit out there fighting for our brothers and sisters and ourselves so at least you can do is contribute five bucks to the cash app like do something um also at contribution we also accept in addition is sharing out these videos and keep the information coming talk about us with your co-workers your partners anyone who doesn't know about us um this is just a great source of information um one thing I, I love to contribute our group to is the fact that everything we tell you can be backed up with facts. Um, and I always encourage everyone to think for themselves and to fact check what we say. And I say that for every video that is posted in our group, any other group, when you have someone talking to you, fact check. Because a lot of times people are putting out information, misinformation. A lot of times it's also gossip. We don't like to deal with gossip. We want to deal with real-time information, um, things you can back up. We always produce receipts. You want receipts, ask for receipts, you will get receipts. Now, so let's see if other people are capable of doing the same. Um, what else? Okay, so I covered last week. Oh, um, shout out to Local 100. We uh, actually attended the Black History Month celebration. It was actually really nice. 
I think everyone should start coming out to more of these events. Um, especially as a black person, you come out to your event because you come out to your event, they show that you show participation. Next year will be better because they know that they have to accommodate a certain amount of people. There was actually a nice crowd there, but out of a membership of uh, 50K um, and predominantly um, people of color between 76% and 78%, we should be packing the house out. Um, just like any other ethnic group. They also have, uh, I think, the Emerald Society for... Is it Emerald Society? I think it's the Emerald Society for the Irish... They have the Italian uh, thing, and they have the one for Asians. We should be packing these things out, all of us. If, and they listen, even if you're not black, even if you're not Asian, we should all go to each other's groups. Let's bridge those gaps. But um, yeah. Uh, anything else? So I covered that. So uh, the meeting on Wednesday. Hmm. Anybody got any questions? What before I sign off? I'm keeping this pretty short. Any questions? Hi, Kara. You say you're new. Welcome. I'm Kimberly. They call me Nuke mostly, so you'll see me on a post. Um, feel free to ask questions. Oh, if anyone wasn't aware, we have a section in Progressive Action that's full of all of the documents. You have the contract up there. You have the bylaws. You have the, uh, the union contract. My bad. Anything that you need a hard copy of, we have the PDF version of it. So um, please take a gander. Yeah, it's definitely time for me to go. My phone is going off. Um, you can still place your question underneath this live. Once again, um, March 25th, Wednesday, 9 o'clock, to Broadway. We encourage women to come down there and tell your stories about how, to, how it is being a woman working for the MTA. Um, this, I know we have people here from Metro North and LRRR. We encourage you guys to come down here as well come down as well so that's wednesday march 25th nine o'clock to broadway reach out to myself jocelyn tramel and let us know that you want to come down share your stories with us um that's about it thanks guys like i said if you have any questions just place them at the bottom have a good night happy sunday